Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, and friends. When I was asked if I would come and speak tonight, I was promised two hours. Now they tell me it's ten minutes. But then, there is a saying that if you cannot say anything you have to say in five minutes, then don't say it. <laughs> now I'm going to speak about me the 13th, but in a very personal way, because unlike most of you, when it happened, I was not here. I was holed up, my wife and I and our little girl, in a small English village called Linton in Devon. We wanted it to be a quiet holiday and therefore we didn't buy newspapers, we didn't even bother to turn the radio on. However, on the morning of the 14th of May, we woke up to find that we had run out of milk. And so we decided to get into our little car to go to the nearest village grocery store. Now my wife went in while I waited in the car and no sooner had she gone in than she rushed out. Horror was written all over her face and she said to me, race riots have broken up in Kuala Lumpur. Now the lady who owned this little shop, on seeing her, because we had been quite regular customers by this time, we have been there more than a week now, and she said, your country is burning. So my wife said to her, you're talking about Vietnam, surely. Because if you recall, in 1969, the war in Vietnam was still very much in the news. Then she pointed to stacks of different English papers, the Times, The Guardian, The Telegraph, a whole lot of other papers. And we then realized that something that we had never expected to happen had indeed happened in our country. Now to me, who had grown up believing in unity in diversity, which those of you of my generation will remember was also the motto that was incorporated in the Federation of Malayans coat of arms. <coughs> unity in diversity, and this is something that I thought would never happen in this land of ours. So to me, it was, in a very personal way, a terrible experience. You call it misguided, national pride, or misplaced personal arrogance, but the idea of people killing in the streets and torching homes was something I thought only happened in other countries, not in my beloved Malaya, uh, Malaysia. We knew Street demonstrations were a regular feature of life in Jakarta, in Manila, and in Bangkok. So, Malaysia? Never! Just as I thought in the 60s that corruption only happened in other countries. <laughs> Now, 
no corruption, please. We are Malaysians. But then, we become wiser as we grow older. And 40 years on, I know for a fact that the BN government is utterly, utterly corrupt. And when I was asked why I had joined the AP, I said in the AP there's no corruption. And when I was asked again by a very senior member of UMNO, who jokingly said to Kwasis, I'm very angry with you. I said, why? Because you have joined the AP. I said, you yourself have said that UMNO is corrupt. When you have cleaned up your act, I will join you. But knowing very well that that would never happen. events of May 13 began to sink in. I felt a deep sense of betrayal. I had grown up, as I said, believing that this country was a united country because I grew up among friends who were not all of my own race, Chinese, Indians, and others.